In the past, I've experimented with growing several different kinds of fruits and vegetables in the same hydroponic system. I've often been asked, don't different plants need different nutrients or lighting? The answer, of course, is yes, ideally they often do. But if you're like me and don't have space for 10 different hydroponic systems, then you want to know if they can be grown together. From my testing so far, it may surprise you how many plants can grow in the same system and still grow quite well. This winter and spring, I decided to try quite a few new plants. I created a video course of how to build a hydroponic system, and in the process of recording all the video, I built this system here. I grew a few strawberry plants successfully in the past, so I wanted to try strawberries again, except more plants. I also tried tomatoes. My concern with tomatoes in a rail system is that they would get too tall and tip over, so I tried a variety called Tiny Tim, which are much more compact. I also grew Swiss chard, sorrel, kale, stevia, and of course lettuce. I took a time lapse video of most of the grow. While it plays, I'll give you some notes about what I did, but if you'd like to just watch plants grow, mute me and listen to some cool music instead. At the beginning, the plants grew more slowly, as expected. The chard, which is in the back row, grows the fastest. I would harvest the biggest leaves as it grew, and by the end, the chard was growing faster than we could even eat it. For lighting, I did a consistent schedule of 14 hours per day and made no adjustments for bloom, and the strawberries and tomatoes both had plenty of flowers and fruit. I started the tomato plants from seed, so they're hard to see for most of this time lapse. I'll talk more about them a little later in this video. Right here is a two to three week gap where my camera stopped taking pictures. So that's why there's a jump in growth. At this point, the chard is still growing super fast and I added a few more chard plants. And now the strawberries have hit their next gear. You can see quite a few flowers forming on the strawberries and around this point is when I started harvesting some berries. The plants had formed such a dense canopy at this point that I no longer had space for lettuce which is okay because I had a system right below this for growing lettuce. The plant growing tall right in front of the camera is stevia. I was able to use it to make stevia extract for sweetening our oatmeal every morning. And I plan to do separate videos on the stevia and strawberries to give you some more detail on how I grew each of those. This time I used maxi grow nutrients, which seemed to work well. Tomatoes seemed like they grew faster with more nutrients, but when the nutrients were too high, greater than seven to 800 ppm, then the strawberry plants started to show tip burn. As the tomato plants got larger, it didn't seem to matter as much. Towards the end of this growth cycle, I started to notice the effects of stagnation, where you could tell that the plants weren't getting the nutrients that they needed, and the roots weren't getting oxygen. So, I think what caused that is that the roots of the large strawberry and tomato plants started to fill up the four inch rail and then block the water flow causing stagnation. So based on that I would recommend if you want to grow this many large plants together either use a larger rail or use fewer rails or both. If you're, use, if you're growing smaller plants then four inches works just fine. Here's our tomato plant several weeks in where the entire rail system is having some stagnation issues because I've got so many plants in a four inch rail and it's kind of blocking the flow. But in spite of that, this tomato plant is still has quite a few green tomatoes on it. And I'm not doing anything special for um making it fruit. I just have the regular light I've been using the whole time. And you can see the plant has gotten quite big even though it's supposed to be a dwarf plant. So it seems like there's potential. I've got some ideas of how to do this better next time. And one of them is use larger rails. We moved to a new home before the tomatoes could fully mature but I still ended up with quite a few cherry tomatoes, which ripened after harvest. 
overall, I've been impressed with the variety of plants that can be grown in a single rail system. If you're just starting out with hydroponics, don't be overwhelmed by all the different needs and rules for growing different plants. Just give it a try. I've found plants to be very adaptable to different situations. If you'd like to build a system like this one, check out our website and online course where we have info on how to build and run a hydroponic system just like this one. Thank you.